Hey everyone, welcome back to Speed 252 If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Clarence. I would love for you to subscribe. I would love for you to push that bell button right beside us so you get a notification anytime I release a video. Now I want to share something with you. This is actual photo we're looking at right now. I have never in my entire life seen anyone or anybody pull something with a Corvette. Now I don't have anything against it. I don't can't say it's wrong. But look at the back end of this Corvette and look how low it is. Corvettes are already low. So on top of that, you're also towing your jet ski behind your Corvette. I literally seen this photo today. I seen a couple of responses to this photo. So I want you all to tell me what your response is. What do you think is going on? Do you think that he's actually getting a divorce and he said, I'm taking a Corvette and a jet ski with me. You can have a house. Do you think he's actually going to Florida or California to get away for better weather? He just want a jet ski and his Corvette with him. So I don't know. Um, I saw this on Facebook. I saw this in the forum. I just want to share it with my followers to get your opinion on what you think about this situation. Um, everybody else pretty much weighed in on the Corvette forum and on Facebook what they thought about this picture. So I just want your thoughts as well. Um, without further ado, let's hop into today's video. The Dodge Viper possibly been a mid engine is coming. What do you think? Hey everyone, thank you for joining me and thank you for pushing that play button. There's a good possibility that the Dodge Viper could come back in 2021. Not as a V10, but as a V8 and also a mid-engine. So far, based off the two things I've given you, what do you think about this coming? Do you think this is a good idea for Dodge to make this move? Or you think it's a bad idea and they should also keep the Dodge Viper killed off? While you think about that, let me give you some other things for thought. Instead of them using their naturally aspirated V10, which they did in the past, like I said earlier, they're considering actually putting a V8 engine inside the Viper. That's kind of, I'm just kind of curious on why they want to change out the V10 into the V8 now. Um, you know, there's obviously a proven factor that the V10 is fine, but it's also a proven fact that the V8 is great as well. But they're also saying that instead of going with the V10 and going with the V8, their V8 may push out. 550 horsepower in their first mid-engine car and their second mid-engine car may push out 700 horsepower or somewhere in that ballpark. Those are good numbers for a V8 mid-engine car, which is why I'm hoping that Chevrolet puts at least a minimum of 500 horsepower in their mid-engine car as well. So as you all know, I currently own a Corvette. Growing up as a kid, the first sports car I ever seen in my entire life was actually a Dodge Viper. I literally had so many remote control cars of a Dodge Viper, it was insane. That was the one car that I always wanted. And so as I became older and became an adult, I realized that the Dodge Viper was out of my reach because there was so limited of them and it was kind of out of my price range as well. Now, just like the Duke Blue Devils and the UNC Tar Heels, they are huge rivalries. That goes for the same thing as the Dodge Viper and the Corvette as well. A lot of people would say since the fifth GM Viper production ended in 2017, and a lot of people say it was killed off because Dodge wanted to make this car as rare. Um, they say Dodge lacked a true Halo sports car. They don't consider the Dodge Demon or the Hellcat true sports cars, which, you know, I'm kind of 50 50. I'm not exactly sure how to feel about that, but what do you guys think? Do you think the Dodge Demon and the Hellcat are true sports cars? So, for some of you who may not know, I have a big interest in the C8 Minigen Corvette. Which is why I also want to make this video of the Dodge Viper being a possible managing car as well. And I've seen lots of things out there on the web that says the Dodge Viper is done, it's never coming back. But I've seen lots of articles and read lots of articles and seen quite a few videos that are saying otherwise. For the Corvette form and for GM Authority to actually create articles and talk about this car, there has to be a possibility chance that this car is going to come. Now, they're not saying this car is going to come you know, next year or what the case may be, but they definitely saying there's a possible chance that a managing Viper could be a car that we could see in the near future. So let me give you some of the facts and things I've heard about the new managing Viper. As said before in a couple of orders I read, the new Viper will use a space frame with the independent suspension in front and rear. A long hood with an engine tucked behind the front axle 
This article also states two things. I'm going to agree with one of them by saying that they did outprice some of their buyers from the beginning. I think when the Dodge Viper came out as their fifth gen, the Dodge Viper was very pricey and a lot of people decided not to buy it. Perfect example, when the NXX came out, I think that car started off around like $250,000 and it did not sell like they wanted it to. So now that's why the price has dropped to $150,000 or a little bit less than that, give or take. But regarding the second thing they said they fell with, which, you know, I can go back and forth with this because there are some cars that are not convertible, but they say that Dodge made a mistake by not making the Dodge Viper a convertible car. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. This article also states that the Dodge Viper will be using a lot of aluminum and carbon fiber parts, keeping the mass as low as possible. Like I stated before, I'm sorry for everyone who enjoyed the V10, but Chrysler is considering literally doing an aluminum block V8 to replace the aging iron block anchor, which is called their Hemi. Now, here's a question for you. Some people say if it's not broke, don't fix it. But here's a really good question. Do you think the Viper will still be a Viper without having this V10? And would you even consider buying a Minage and Dodge Viper if it's not a V10 as well? Now, this article pretty much states that the new Dodge Viper main engine will be able to compete with the Porsche GTs and also with Chevy's upper high-end cars like the C8 ZR1, the C8 Z06, and things of that nature. Now, I know a lot of you are probably wondering, when will this car debut? When will it come out? Which auto show will it come at? Well, according to this article, it says it's estimated arrival and pricing. Hmm. The January 2019 Detroit Auto Show will be the 30th anniversary of this Viper concept debut. It will be a fitting tribute for the next Viper to be go public then, though we don't expect to see it on the road until late 2020 or as early as 2021, especially the first model. Borrowing an engine from elsewhere in the FCA lineup might have a massive impact on the base price. Now let's talk a little bit about the pricing of the Dodge Viper and of the C8. Now we all know that C8 is like a mass production car, what we hope is a mass production car. We do know that Corvettes are you know, generally mass production. And we all kind of guessed the price of the C7 when it first came out, which was around $55,000. Well, right now, no one can really guess exactly what the price would be of the C8 because it's a whole different car with the engine being in the back. But a lot of us is guessing anywhere between sixty-five to $75,000 when there are some people who's going to the stream and saying $170,000. And then the quote behind that is, there's no car you can get below $170,000 as main engine, which is kind of true. But according to this article, they're also saying that the Dodge Viper will start around $90,000 main engine, which kind of makes sense and probably will actually put the C8 Corvette a little less than that. I do think, like I said before, that Dodge Viper outpriced a lot of their, um, their customers, which is why the fifth gen Viper didn't sell as well and didn't sell as much, which is the reason why I think they personally killed the car off to bring it back in the future with better pricing and pretty much a convertible, whatever the case may be, whatever they decide to do with this car. But at the end of the day, I do kind of hope that the Dodge Viper comes back because I would love to see all the new features and everything they decide to do with this car. And I'm kind of curious to see how well it um, performs um, next to the C8 Minage and Corvette. Thank you all for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. I do want to apologize that my voice is a little hoarse from the last car show I was at because I was talking to so many great followers, so many great people. So I do want to apologize for that. But once again, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Um, I do want to plan another live video pretty soon. When I figure out the date and time, I'll definitely let everyone know. Um, but once again, thank you for being part of the channel. If you're a new subscriber, once again, thank you for pushing that subscribe button. And I hope to catch another episode of See You on the Speed 252.